When it comes to the topic of competition, we have been told that we can manifest our success if we are exclusively competing against ourselves. And when we are in competition with ourselves, we are eliminating the unsolicited expectations from others. And there are so many reasons why we should support that notion, but I would like to provide a different perspective. When the clock strikes 12 midnight, we are subconsciously programmed to hit that reset button. When we hit that reset button, we look forward to the new day or the new week. We look forward to birthdays, special days like graduation, anniversaries, weddings. We look forward to new beginnings like the first day of school or the first day of work. We ultimately look forward to new opportunities while preparing for the challenges that we may have ahead of us. Well, the first challenge that we must face in any given day is waking up on demand and getting the day started. Now, there are two types of people in this world. <laughs> You're the group of people that can wake up in just one alarm. And then you have the other group of types of people that need a few more reminders to wake up in the morning. Many of us fall victim to hitting that snooze button repeatedly in the morning, but that alarm clock serves as the first daily reminder that we are up against time and we are competing in a friendly competition. Now, we come across so many challenges throughout the day, and it seems as though we have little to no time to accomplish our goals. And when it comes to, when it comes to accomplishing our goals, we have goals, aspirations, we have our purpose. We have our purpose, and most of us even have New Year's resolutions. But according to the U.S. News and World Reports, up to 80% of New Year's fell by mid-February. Further research suggests that 92% of goals fail in general. So I have to ask this question. What is so different about the other 8% of people that are killing it? Well, for starters, most of us don't believe in our New Year's resolutions because there is no sense of urgency in accomplishing them. We don't believe in, in, in accomplishing, you know, resolutions that have no deadline. And it seems as though it's basically a, a wish that will never come true. <laughs> One of the most important factors where we have to accomplish our goals, we must set that deadline. That is the number one a key ingredient of accomplishing our goals. Because once we set that deadline, we have that binding contract. And once we have that binding contract with our goals, we have established and commenced that friendly competition with time. So what happens when we establish our, our contract and our goals here, and especially with the deadlines that are coming into place? When we have a strict deadline. Imagine if we have a strict de deadline for each goal, what happens? But to answer this question, I have a metronome. It's a portable metronome to explain this intuitive concept. So, as procrastinators, as we all are, most of us are procrastinators, um, we have a metronome that is set at 30 beats per minute. And we know that metronomes are very useful tools of establishing a, a steady tempo. They establish a steady tempo, and on top of that, it helps us with our focus, coordination, and attention. So let's start this experiment. We hear this beat. At 30 beats per minute, we have a steady tempo. As procrastinators, we tend to focus and, and, and take our time. We believe that we have all the time in the world to accomplish our goals. We have a deadline in place, but we have enough time to do it. We have all the time in the world, right? No problem. But as time progresses, you realize that the beeps within our metronome will increase. It increases our cadence. And as I'm speaking, I'm speaking with a sense of urgency. Now I'm, I'm starting to rush things here now. Okay, now I'm, I'm not even thinking about what I have to talk about because now I have to do something and I have a deadline that is set in place. And as time continues to increase, we have the beep, that beep that's constantly in the back of our heads. Let's pause this metronome experiment for a while. And I would like to explain this concept. See, on one hand, the awareness of our goals and our deadlines, it pushes us to achieve something. 
And on the other hand, the awareness of our goals can also paralyze the, our ability to perform well. The Yorkers Dotson Law states that we perform our very best when we are at our moderate state of arousal. As procrastinators, we don't mind that we have a deadline coming up soon because we have all the time in the world. So we feel bored. We don't feel like doing anything right now. But as we realize that time is ticking and our deadline is approaching, that's when we get engaged. And we, we reach that moderate state of arousal um, when we know that time is working against us. And when, we, when I talk about arousal, I'm referring to the impulses, the excitement, the motivation, the attention to do something. That is lacking in most of, in most of when we procrastinate towards our goals here. The Yorkers Dotson Law is very relevant whenever we're taking a test or whenever we're running late from work. In sports, the Yorkers Dotson Law comes into effect when we are at clutch time, where time is winding down and we need to figure out who's going to make that big play to eventually win the game. As we continue this, let's continue this metronome experiment. So at this point, we're rushing. And as time continues to pass by, the speed of our cadences will increase, basically letting us know that we don't have much time. We're no longer thinking about the possibilities of what ifs. We're just reacting. We're basically using our impulses that we learned in the past from our experience to basically establish something in the future. We're trying to make sure that we accomplish something and, and, and get things done. And as time continues to progress, and that deadline is approaching, we have to, we have to act fast. There's no possibilities of what if. We need, to, we need to be successful, correct? So there's no form of error. And as the metronome stops, we realize that we, we have reached our deadlines and the, the results are in. It's either you win or you lose. It's either you pass or you fail. You've accomplished something or you didn't accomplish something. As we are competing against time, we, we experience different stresses. On one hand, we experience that excitement when we first set up that, that new uh, deadline. We have the new deadline, we set up that new deadline, we feel like we're on top of the world. We feel as though we can establish that something. I, I, feel, I feel like I'm good, I feel successful here, right? That's basically the green side of this continuum here. That's the positive aspect, that's the use stress. It's a positive impulse that lets us know that we are motivated to accomplish something. As we realize that time is working against us and we feel as though we're not doing that, what we're supposed to do, we become stressed, we become much more stressful. We reach that red, red mark. The red mark lets us know that we are in distress to the point where we feel like ripping our, our hair out. We feel as though we're not, we're, we're not really getting things done here and I'm so worried about the, the outcomes of my goals here. There's a new term that we are using today. It's called quietly quitting. When we quietly quit, we're not quitting our jobs or we're not quitting our objectives per se. However, we're recalibrating how we think of things. We're not working as hard as we can. We're basically trying to recalculate whether or not we can, we can maneuver and accomplish our goals despite the fact that we, you know, despite the fact that we are still under distress. And as we operating at the top of our performance, we want to be at the midpoint. We want to be between, we want to have a combination between you stress and distress, where we feel as though we are uncomfortable at the moment because that pushes us to achieve something. However, we're confident that we can operate outside of our comfort zone. Leaders today, they establish that, that, that midpoint, that midpoint that allows them to, to perform well, despite the fact that they are under extreme duress. However, through dire situations, they feel so passionate, passionate and so confident that they can establish something and, and make sure they, they move forward and propel their team to higher, to higher heights and to success as well. As, as I continue to reflect on that metronome experiment, and as we, we, we continuously hear that beeping sound, we realize that your, 
you're only competing against yourself when no one is watching. You're only competing against yourself when, when you're practicing and you're training to become better. You're trying to improve your skills. When no one is watching you, when you're all alone, that is the perfect time where you can perform at your best and compete against yourself. But we will say this. Successful practice players don't mean much in the game. And this leads to the final point that world records exist for a reason. And they're meant to be broken. Some records, they take years. Some records may not take months. If you possess that clutch DNA that can propel you to, to improve at your abilities, you realize that you're competing against time and you can achieve that world record success. Most people lack that clutch DNA. Very few people have it, they're made of it. And you have some people that are actually cultivating that clutch DNA. As we embody this, this, this mindset of becoming limitless, I would like for you guys to understand that if we believe that it is possible to accomplish something that was supposed to be impossible, then it is also possible that nothing is impossible. Thank you.